closer than a brother. Amen. 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 Anybody got any spoken requests tonight? Sister Angela? service tonight. Why don't we stand? Let's just invite the presence of the Lord. So good to have the presence of the Lord, isn't it? Amen. I tell you what, he's wonderful. Yes, All right, let's amen. pray. Father, we love you, Lord, and we thank you, God, for all you do.
page 114.
page 237.
giving. Amen. Give it back that which belongs to the Lord. Amen. Father in heaven, thank you, Lord, for all your blessings to all of us. Take up this offering tonight, Lord, and put this back in your hand. May you use it in a mighty way for your kingdom and give you honor and glory and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
little impromptu of a story, but uh, I believe the Holy Spirit's been leading me down the road this last week uh, about a story, and that is uh, the story with uh, Moses uh, in the wilderness. You know, the very first battle that the Jews fought going into the desert uh, was with the tribe of Amalek. Right. Uh, it's in, you find that in Exodus chapter 17. And the battle goes on, and you know the story about uh, Moses, where when he holds up the rod, they're winning the battle, and when uh, he lets his hands down, right, right. they're losing the battle. I, I know you're well familiar with that story, and her is there. Uh, you know, if you think about it, if you look at the way he's holding his hands in there, it's actually Jesus on the cross. I do want you to know that it's actually a, a picture of that. Uh, now, the Book of Jubilees, which is not part of God's Word, by the way, but it does say in the Book of Jubilees uh, that that took place in the first month, referring to Nisan, which is March, April to you, the month of Passover. Uh, and in the Mishnah, which was written by the Jewish sages, 100 50 to 200 years before Jesus was born, it says that event took place uh, on the 14th and 15th of Nisan, which is the same calendar day Jesus dies on the cross. Those same sages connected the story uh, in Numbers chapter 21 where uh, the snakes are out there and God, the fiery snakes are fighting people and they're dying. And the Lord had told Moses to take this brazen rod and put a, put a brazen snake on, right. this, on this rod, if you will. Uh, you know, no one explains the answer to that until Jesus explains it in John chapter 3, verse 14. And he says, as they did with Moses when they looked up, uh, it says, it'll be the same with the Son of Man, referring to himself. Yeah. And it's a, it's a type and shadow of Jesus taking on the sins of the world. We all know that snake, rep snake represents uh, Satan. So uh, the reason I wanted to bring that up, uh, we clearly can see Jesus on the cross in that story with Moses lifting up. And I'd say one last thing. Uh, in the Hebrew language where it says takes his hands and lifts up. It says he's lifting up his faith in Hebrew. And you know, the ancient sages picked up on that. This. this is 150, 200 years before Jesus was born. And they connected those two stories that I shared with you. So I believe there's uh, there's great truths in the Bible. And we know because he went to the cross for us that we, that we have to Amen. Worship the Lord.
amen. That will be all musicians. Anybody else want to testify? <coughs> Says, give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your hearts to the words of my mouth. And um, then verse 41. Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They remembered not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. Praise the Lord. Do you ever think about the times that we limit God? Yeah. I ran upon a, uh, an outline in, in uh, I think it was uh, Golden Handbooks, and uh, got to thinking and meditating upon this. And uh, let's just pray, and I'll let you sit down. Father, we love you tonight. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit that leads us and guides us. And I pray, God, that you would overshadow us and make us effective for you. I pray, Lord, that you would minister to every heart that's here tonight. God, body, soul, and spirit, mind, will, and emotion, help us all. God, all of us, Lord, to give our all to you tonight. We submit, we surrender, we humbly yield to you, Lord. And want your will to be accomplished in us. Touch and use this church. Touch each of our families for your glory. And we'll praise you in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 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 You can be seated. Israel was a rebellious nation. But God was gracious and gave the people opportunities to start again. This is not an excuse for us to sin and tempt God. 
But it is an encouragement to repent when we do sin and fall short. God's answer to Israel's needs was to give them a spiritual leader, David the shepherd. He had both integrity of the heart and ability of the hands, and he sought to serve the Lord and to love the flock of Israel. People have not changed. They still rebel against God. Uh, Warren Wisby cover, covers each of the chapters of the Bible chapter by chapter. And it's just got a brief, brief excerpt. And uh, uh, verse 1 says, Oh, give ear, or give ear, O oh my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. And I don't know how many of you have got the uh, uh, Life in the Spirit Bible. But I'm telling you, he has some great, great, great commentary mm -hmm. down at the bottom on verse 1 and on verse 5. On verse 1, he said, This psalm was written to remind Israel why so many devastating judgments of God came upon them throughout their history. The psalm warns them to learn from the spiritual failures of their forefathers and to strive diligently to avoid the same unbelief and unfaithfulness. Secondly, God's people today should pay close attention to this psalm since many churches, amen, and denominations have lost the presence and the power of God through unbelief and disobedience of God's Word. By failing to make biblical standards and experience the basis for truth and practice, they have gradually gone astray and turned to their own ways. Verse 5. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. That the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments and might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. Right. That they might not be as their fathers and their forefathers who were a stubborn and a rebellious people. And did you know, I find in looking this over and thinking this over, as I was meditating upon this, before I even really began to go to this book or uh, really began to take and go through a lot of this, my thought was upon, you know, the youth of our land today, they are not, they are not going after the rebellion of their fathers and their forefathers. They're kind of like it was in the Bible when they said, uh, you know, the king, he got counsel from the elderly men to, to say if he'd be gentle and soft and loving and caring, then they'll serve him forever. <laughs> but the young men admonished them to go to him and say, my little will be thicker than my father's thigh in the harshness and hardness that I'm going to put and demand upon you. And I want you to know the devil is wanting you to think that that's the way God is wanting you to serve him. Right. He's using his little pinky as the thickness of the thigh to bring you down, to make you fall, to make you no, no, no. We need to take and look and see any good that our dads and our fathers did toward righteousness. And we need to be thankful for those good deeds. And we need to be thankful for those examples that they did before us toward our God.
And we need to beg God to help us to surrender and, and uh, serve the Lord faithfully. But we got to be sensitive and realize that it's not always the way it appears. We limit God. And we don't realize how much we limit God. But we do limit Him. When we limit God, you know, the Bible says that Jesus could not do many mighty works because of unbelief. The unbelief that was there in, uh, in Nazareth, I believe it was, it could not be could not be performed, even the Son of God, the perfect, blameless, sinless, all-powerful Son of God. Yep. Because He allowed Himself to be limited by us, by man. Sin limits God because man has the power to choose and go his own way and do his own thing. You know, whenever you seek and set out to help somebody, I don't know why I think so much about, uh, you know, the, the kids at school. It may be because that uh, uh, KB is a teacher now, but I, I think so much about Angela, Sister Angela. Uh, I know in my own life that so, so many times I went to help somebody and in going to help them amen it has been turned to where it seemed like that they weren't appreciative and it seemed like that they didn't recognize the help and didn't weren't thankful for the help they didn't like the help and I believe I was talking to some this week and even mentioned it but how many times times during times of temptation that God would later, within a week or two, use me to be a blessing to somebody. I mean to be a real blessing yeah. to somebody. Yeah. To pray with that person. To lead that person back to a harmonious walk with God. Yeah. But the devil tried to blow it all out of proportion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because of my finite understanding, my simple mind. Right. And my lack of ability to, to see things from God's perspective. God's going to let you choose what you want to do. God don't want any man to die and go to hell. It's not His will that any man perish. But that all come to repentance and life. But the things that you do very possibly are going to have an impact upon the people that you're around. You may go and think you're just benefiting yourself a little bit. And you may be damaging your testimony to the point to where that person could be in an eternal hell yeah. because of the choice you made. You say, well, don't lay that guilt trip on me. They're the ones that has the ability to to choose. That's right. Just like we do. And how many bad choices have we chosen? Yeah. Because of some of the deeds that some have done. That they didn't mean no harm toward us. Yeah. They really didn't. But we weren't studying them. We were just trying to take care of ourselves. Remember Brother Gary preached, I told you several times, that message years ago. People usually are really neither for you nor against you. In those scenarios, in those situations that you're thinking of, those great trials, they're gurgling themselves. They're trying to keep from drowning in the water and the cesspool of this world and, and sin and the flesh and all the things that are coming against them. Right. But I want you to know God wants you to choose righteousness. Yes. Amen. When we fail to pray and fail to cry out for the Lord's strength and the Lord's admonition, many times we limit God and His ability to work in behalf. Brother uh, Smith gave the testimony about how uh, Joshua then helped, helped Moses' hands up. Yeah. Whenever the hands there were in the form of the cross, Brother Moses' hands were heavy. Yep. Yeah. 
And they, he needed somebody to hold their hands up. Right. Right. And I'm telling you, you're holding people's hands up. Brother Nick, you're holding people's hands up. Sister Angela, you're holding people's hands up. Yeah. Those kids, you'll, you'll never know possibly this side of glory. How many kids you may have already had in your class that had it not been for you and the encouragement that they had and found in your class, they might have committed suicide or something. God yeah. forbid People are hopeless. People are overwhelmed. They, they, uh, I know it rains on the just and the unjust, but you and I have got the Lord by our side. You and I have got God's strength. And yeah. I mean, when the weight does get so heavy that we can't take it anymore, we really can go to the rock. We yeah. really can fall down beside our bed or, or at the recliner or altar, wherever you cry out to God. And you can get a hold to the Lord and ask God to help you and strengthen you and make you an overcomer. God, take away my weakness and give me strength. Amen. But you need to realize that, that you're not asking just doubting. You're asking in an urgent plea. Yeah. And just like we wouldn't dare let our kids go away in that moment or hour of need and just ignore their cry and plea, God's not going to let us go away. Yes, that's right. But who do they have to go to? I want you to know the devil's not all powerful. The one that they serve would will for them to be destroyed. God help us whenever Daniel began to cry out to the Lord. He became the leader of Babylon. Whenever Moses began to pray, the Red Sea was parted. Amen. Whenever, uh, whoever, you can go all through the Word of God. Uh, how many times did, did Ruth and, and uh, them see their mother-in-law uh, cry out to God? And whenever the, the one sister, Orpah, she went back to the, the homeland. She went back to her family and everything. But Ruth claimed unto her. Why? Because she seen something. She saw something in her. That she really had been searching for. That's right. That she couldn't run away from. <clears throat> Amen. Paul, he opened many, many, many souls and churches to the kingdom because of a prayer. Paul, because of a faithful life, said there shall be no loss of any man's life among you. Right. I'm telling you, lives were spared because Paul found favor with the centurion. Yes. They said, let's kill them lest they should escape. But because of his heartfelt feelings toward Paul, he saw something in that man. Yes. God let people see something in us. Yeah. Yeah. Not that they'll lift us up and not that they'll think we're all that. No, I want you to know we're not all that. No, he is all that. Yes, he that is in us is all that. Yes. Right. Yeah. Amen. And any glory or credit or praise that we would ever give belongs to Him. Yes, it's robbery for me to take for us to take any other credit. God help us. The world today is in a mess. It's it's got problems that that we've not even begun to meditate upon yet. There's people possibly in the next few months that's going to be losing homes by the droves. There's people that's going to be losing jobs by the drove. Brother Gary was sharing and telling some things that he drives a truck. and He's got several uh, big trucks and everything. And, and uh, he was telling us about some friends of his in different states that, that I'm telling you, they're trying to set us up for failure. And we're asleep. Yep. Yep. Amen. What I mean by asleep is not necessarily just head nodding. I'm talking about we're not aware of it. Yes, that's right. Because we have not prayed mm -hmm. like we need to pray. We have not read the Bible. And I am guilty, 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 guilty. I am so convicted. Every time I hear Brother Smith and different ones of you get up and share scripture, 
I mean, Brother Alvin begins to share what God had showed him from the Word of God. He convicts my heart at my, my lack of intelligence and lack of depth of the Word of God. And I can say, oh, I've read, I've studied. But have I? Have I really? Oh, I have according to my standards. But if I've studied so much, why have they got all the nuggets? <laughs> <laughs> I know you probably feel that way sometimes, but not as often as me. Uh, our doubt and our lack of faith limits God. Have you ever limited God? Have you ever limited God? I remember that time that I was there with that group of preachers, and that preacher was having a heart attack. And there was, I was just a young, young preacher, just, just. I don't know if I'd preached over two or three times, and I don't even know if I'd ever really felt the anointing of God yet in my life. But I was thinking, why don't somebody pray? Yeah. Why don't some of these presbyters and these secretaries and these state overseers, and why don't some of them cry out to God? Right. And they finally did. But I wonder how it would have convicted them if this young whippersnapper would have went over and began to lay my hand on him and begin to cry out for the blood of Jesus to intervene. You think maybe it might would have blessed them? It probably would have. But doubt and lack of faith kept me from kind of being a, a Hebrews chapter 11 Christian. But if you want to, you can be kind of a Hebrews chapter 11 Christian. I looked up and counted one time. I don't remember. Something like 23 or 25 times faith is mentioned in the 11th chapter of Hebrews. God help us. God help us. You know, whenever Gideon had the 3,200 or whatever it was and going out against the 50,000 and and. Uh, you know, he felt inept and inadequate. And uh, God looked at 3,200, 32,000, whatever it was. I don't really remember. But God looked at him and said, you've got too many. Yeah. And told him to, to these that drink one way, go home. Everybody that's afraid, go home. Everybody that's this, go home. And when he wound up, I think he wound up with 300. God says you can, you can fight the battle with 300. He was questioning God's math. We don't never need to question God. We can trust Him. He's faithful. At the beginning of the service, I tell you what, we were uh, we were looking for a key. God help us find the key. I said, Lord, let her not get her mind on the key. Let her not worry about the key. We'll find the key. And if not, we can buy another one. Amen? But I'm telling you, the enemy wants things to keep us from trusting God and wants us to limit God. Thank God, thank God for the ability and the anointing of God in us for Him to stir us and shake us and if we've got a real need, we can cry out to God. Brother, I'm telling you, if all of a sudden there's an emergency and we need an urgent, urgent power from on high, He'll be there to minister. You know, we're not going to be able to give God unlimited power in ourselves. We say, we all know that. We can't give God power. But really, truth, when you look at it, if we will trust God, He said, ask largely. Ask that you might receive. Amen. Say unto this sycamine tree, be cast into the sea. Say unto this mountain, be removed and, and be, be cast into the sea or whatever. I'm telling you, our obedience to the will and word of God ties or loosens God's hands. And I want you to see this week, if you go to work or go to 
to school or go to clean or, or go up against some trial and that person that you were expecting comfort and friendship and encouragement from, all of a sudden they're a trial and they're hard to get along with. If you'll just cry out to God, God may take and bring the scripture to you. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. And God may let you see that he's wanting you to be a great, great blessing to that opposing force that's coming against you. Why? Because there's needs there. They got a need. Sister Allen, they got a need. God help us. God help us. If we'll pray beforehand for God to meet the need, if we'll ask God before for God to equip us, for God to, to meet the need, for God to give us what we need, that we can pray in belief. That God can minister. He'll do it and he'll help us. You know, only God can make a soul repent and turn from their sin. You point out someone's sin to them and they just get angry and mad and, and tumultuous. And, and they just, they just want to uh, fight about it a lot of times. But did you know the love of God can help somebody? to want to turn away from their sin. And they see that love in me and you. They see that love in us. Amen? Amen. God help us. Let there be no limit to what God does through us. He said, without me, you can do nothing. But he says, you can do all things. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's what the Word of God says. Paul said, I can do all things. And I want you to know tonight, you can do greater things than any opposition that comes against you. But you've got to let God do it through you. Don't look at your own ability. Y'all wonder why I'm grinning at Ashley's back there, grinning at Sister Craig. Sister Craig can't pay attention to me when <laughs> Ashley's acting like that. I'm telling you what, I mean, Sister Craig wakes up in the morning to see that smile. Amen. Amen. And I love it. I love it. Let God use you. This afternoon I felt so inadequate. I tell you what, I just thinking and I felt unprepared and I felt what in the world have I got? What in the world can I do? And I can't do anything. But I can trust God and be faithful. Yeah. And that's the same thing we can do. I'm telling you, when we trust God and be faithful, our loved ones have to take note. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen? It's easy for me. i got a Christian loved one. Amen? Yeah. may be hard for her sometimes. But, uh, but I'm telling you, these people that have got trials and struggles, if you'll do it God's way, God will intervene. Amen. And God will bring forth. Amen. Amen. God can intervene. God can, can if we'll grab the prayer bells, yes. grab a hold to the horns of the altar and just yes. love God and want to yes. be faithful. We get so anxious and so tied up and, and worried about who's going to be offended at this and who's going to be bothered by that and they're not going to understand when all we're wanting to do really and truly is just figure out the will of the Lord. And do it faithfully. Right. That's our goal. Yeah. As Christians, that's our heartbeat. Yes. And I just ask you that tonight when you pray to ask God to help you, not to limit Him, but to trust Him. Yes. Obey Him, be yielded to Him, and then the things that you don't have any control over, just give to God. Yes. And just back up and watch what God does with it. Amen? Amen. He'll do it. He's got Mark, he's got your loved one and this loved one. He's got them. Yes, and he can handle it and he can do it. I'm telling you, Sister Persinger, I read to you this morning what she, what she said. I went through her Bible 
I probably literally spent 10 minutes going through her Bible today trying to figure out uh, and find what I had read this week. And I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it. My wife came over here and she said, you want me to look and see if I can find it? I said, there ain't no sense of you wasting your time. I've already looked probably for 10 minutes. And uh, she said, well, I don't mind. I said, well, I guess so. You're just wasting your time, so to speak. I mean, I had so much faith. And she took the Bible, and then about a half a minute or a minute, she said, she went to say, is it here? And I closed the Bible. And I said, no, that's not it. And then the Bible fell back open or something, and sure enough, that was it. I'm telling you what, when you're nervous, when you're tired, feel inadequate? Are you faithful? Yeah. <clears throat> Is your desire to be in, to love the Lord and to please Him and to help somebody along the way? Yeah. Do you want God to just say, well done, one day? Yes, I want you to know you're the apple of His eye. That's what He longs for from you. You're doing a good job. If you're doing that, you're doing a good job. You just keep on being faithful for God. And watch what God will do. He'll help you. Amen. And He's going to educate us and, and equip us and anoint us. I'm probably never going to preach like some of those guys preached this week. Amen in Oklahoma. But I tell you what, I can love God and go to the same heaven they're going to go to. Amen. Amen. If I'll be faithful. Yes. And so can you. Amen. Amen. All right, praise the Lord. Why don't you stand tonight? Is there anybody that needs special, special prayer?